the most underappreciated position in volleyball has got to be the middle. While the wing spikers are racking up the kills, middle blockers are jumping hundreds of times a game, desperately trying to protect the players behind them. There are so much more than giants who can't pass. So the next time you play volleyball, remember to thank your middle. This is the fourth out of five videos in the 5-1 Volleyball Top 10 Player Series. The only volleyball videos on YouTube that don't sound like a club at 2 a.m. in Ibiza. I hope you enjoy it. The last 18 months have been a roller coaster for French middle blocker Kevin LaRue. After an amazing performance at the 2017 World League, where he helped France win a gold medal in Curitiba, he spent half an injury plague season in Moscow before returning to his hometown to play for Rennes Volley 35, who ended up finishing 11th in the French League. Not the ideal club season for him, I'm sure. Just a few months later, he returned to top form with the French national team, winning a silver medal in Nations League and taking home a best blocker award for his contributions. LaRue has good height even for a middle at 6'11", and his wild spin serve has resulted in some timely runs for France when it goes in the court. His next stop in his career is in Sada Cruzeiro, where he will attempt to do his best impression of another prominent middle on this list. Like a lot of top middle blockers, Nzani has always had the height and athleticism, but took a while to learn the small details that distinguish players at this position. Now that he has learned the tricks of the trade, he is one of the most in-demand players of the Italian Super League. Teams are desperate to fill their rosters with Italian middles so that they can spend their valuable foreign roster spots on outsides and opposites. Having an impactful Italian middle, rather than a merely competent one, can be the difference in a super competitive league. Enzani is looking like the go-to middle of the Italian national team for the near future. His connection with Simone Gianelli means he scored on 83 of 124 attacks in the Nations League. Once he learns to read attackers a bit better, he could be a spiritual successor to Italian legend Alessandro Fey. After Bruno and Lucas Satkamp, the second most deadly setter slash middle combo might be TJ Sanders and Graham Vigrass. When they play together, you can never count the middle attack out. And on free balls, there's no point in even trying to stop them. Vigris had a 58 kill percentage during this Nations League and made an error on only one out of every 50 attacks, which is an absurdly low number. And he plays well with other setters as well. He was one of the go-to scorers for Berlin in their Champions League run last season and will play for Canadian national team coach Stefan Antiga in Versava next season. Receivers are troubled by his tricky float serve, which scores plenty of aces due to his high release point and fast ball speed, at least for a float serve. Vigras is not the flashiest player, but the contributions he can make to a team are the kind that lead to winning. Serbia produces a lot of big guys who know how to play volleyball. Peter Krizmanovic, Dragan Stankovic, Alexander Okolic, Sreko Lizanac, and Mirko Podrashinin are all middles who can play at the highest level. Podrashinin is probably the best blocker out of all of them. In the 2018 Nations League, he had a 5.6 block kill percentage, third among all middles. And he blocked 0.72 balls per set with Perugia in the Italian Super League, the most in the league for any player. Podrashinin patrols the net like a cat catching a mouse, ready to pounce on the ball and get the block as soon as the set goes up. His blocking was a huge reason for Perugia's massive success last season, but he's no slouch in attacking either. Smart, deep hitting allows him to hit over 60% in just about every match he plays in. With all these awesome middles, seeing Serbia on the schedule must make opposing big men feel a bit nervous. Having just turned 21, Jakub Kohanovski is the youngest player on any of our top 10 lists. He is the face of a new generation of Polish volleyball players that also includes guys like Bartosz Szolek and Tomasz Fornal. The development of Kochanowski is ahead of schedule. In his first stint on the senior national team during the summer's Nations League, Kuba was clearly the best middle for Poland. He led all blockers and block kill percentage with 5.9%, and attackers only hit 44.7% against him. Pretty good stats for a 21-year-old middle blocker who isn't even 6'7". His 100 block performance in the Plus Liga last season caught the attention of league champion Skra Belchitov, who are bringing him in next season to replace Streko Lizanac. A tough player to follow up, 
but Kohunowski has the chops to do it. One of the most recognizable faces of USA Volleyball this decade has been Max Holt. And not just because he could have been the stunt double for Thor. Holt does everything you want from a traditional middle. He can block with the best of them due to his long wingspan and great footwork. And a powerful spin serve can prevent even good passing teams from running their first offense. Holt has followed the path of many great USA Volleyball players, coming out of a prestigious NCAA program like Penn State and filtering straight into the Italian and Russian Pro Leagues. Considering his level of play and prestige, however, Holt does lack some hardware. He will have the chance to change that at the World Championships with Team USA and next year in the Champions League with Modena. Block from Holt and Russell. 28-26, they lead Brazil 2-0. The 2010s in volleyball have belonged to Brazil, and a protagonist on the run has been Lucas Sackamp. The rangy and athletic middle blocker has a closet full of medals, including a gold from the 2016 Olympics and a silver from the 2012 Olympics. Lucas and Brazilian setter Bruno have a connection that few volleyball players can ever hope to achieve. Their deceptive yet powerful runs include shoots, back quicks, and even the occasional back row attack. There is a lot of competition at the middle position for Brazil as well. Mauricio Souza, Eder Carbonera, Isaac Santos, and Sidao are all fantastic players. But Lucas has been the steady force for Brazil amongst all the changes in his teammates. 72 kills on 66% attacking in the Nations League might be a contributing factor. Also, I don't know where I'm going to get another chance to say this, but does anyone think he looks a lot like NBA player Marcus Sol? Or is that just me? There is an extremely short list of middles who can operate as a number one scoring option in volleyball, but Lizanach makes the cut. Despite standing at 6'9", Lizanach is an explosive athlete when attacking the ball. With a spike touch close to 12 feet, he has a lot of court to work with on attacking. Defenders often don't even get a chance to touch the ball, as his favorite spots to hit are in front of the attack line or just over the blocker. Lizanach is about as flashy as you can get for a middle. Like Lucas, he gets plenty of back row attacking opportunities after he serves, and can even pull off an Enka pet. Another favorite of his is the no lick attack, which is pretty cool to watch but I'm not sure how effective it really is. And he's able to pick up red cards with the best of them. Lizanach also has a huge serve, but is not quite the defensive force as the next two players on this list. I look forward to a lot of amazing moments between him and Gianelli next year in Trentino. If someone were to create a volleyball video game, create a character, and max out the height and weight, Dmitry Mrzerski would be the result. Humans this tall were simply not meant to play volleyball. Somehow Mrzerski not only pulls it off at the highest level, but manages to make it look effortless. His return to the Russian national team this year was a huge factor in their complete domination of the 2018 Nations League, after failing to medal at the 2016 Olympics or 2017 World League. He had the highest attacking efficiency by far at the Nations League, with 62%. And remember, that's attacking efficiency, not attack kill percentage, so it takes into account errors as well. And the second lowest opponent attack percentage at 44.4%. And he's not just good because of his height either. Mazursky has great touch on attacks, and can hit sharp angles. And he has one of the best serves out of anyone on this list. I think he has like a 80% chance of winning best blocker at the World Championships. Honorable mentions include Viktor Yosifov of Bulgaria, Syed Musavi of Iran, Enrico Chester of Italy, and Matej Biniak of Poland. The second Cuban player topping one of these lists that can't play for a national team. Can you imagine how good Cuba would be if they let their players represent their country? It's a shame for Simon, because he's the most dominant middle in the world right now. If there is one word that defines Simon's game, it's power. We've seen him hit balls into the ceilings of stadiums, and his jump serves bruise the arms of anyone attempting to pass them. And his unbelievable speed considering his size means he puts up big blocks on the pins to shut down opposing wing hitters. He is such a strong attacker that he can play opposite without missing a beat. However, Simon did catch some controversy this summer after he left Brazilian club Sada Cruzeiro with a year left in his contract to join Italian powerhouse Lube Civitanova. Now the situation has devolved into he said, she said madness, and the FIVB might even get involved. Despite that situation though, two things are certain. 
Robert Landy Simon is a great volleyball player. And Lube will be crazy stacked next year. Thanks for watching guys. I hope these videos are doing a good job of killing the time before the world championship starts. Love the discussion that everyone is having in the comments below. Liberos are going to be the last video in this series, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that one. Thanks.